because Wonder Woman 1984 just dropped on HBO Max, I've already we've watched it and reviewed it here on the YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to stop and rank all nine films in the DCEU. My name is Max Derrick. Welcome back to a brand new ranking here on Max Talks Movies. Before I get to my full nine movie ranking, this might take a little bit here, so stay tuned for this ranking please hit that like button that's the best way to support this channel if you're liking what i do here on this youtube channel also let me know your ranking of the dceu in the comment section down below do you love this franchise hate this franchise let me know your rankings do you agree disagree with me let's have a great conversation about these films in the comment section down below also please subscribe and ring that bell for begins for lots of more videos on this channel i'll be reviewing soul today i've already watched it um i'll be ranking pixar very soon we're ranking so much stuff really next week of the 2020 year itself. So stay tuned. That's why you got to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel. Because it's a long video, let's get into the ranking. So starting off with the number nine movie, in my opinion, and that is Suicide Squad, which came out 2016. Um, David Ayer. I actually, for some reason, liked this movie out of the theater in 2016. I walked out, I was like, you know, this is actually pretty good. Um, I heard everyone trashing on it, and it didn't make a lot of money. Um, but not, I have rewatched it since, and I have stopped wanting to rewatch it since. Um, this is a really tough movie to watch because it really is a mess. Um, now, the easily the best parts of the movie are Will Smith and Margot Robbie. There's a reason why Margot Robbie is continuing to do this character, not just in Birds of Prey, but also in the next Suicide uh, Squad film. But this movie has a lot wrong going on. They don't really give any character a huge character arc in the entire film. There's just fun characters. And because they're the villains, you're not really rooting for anyone at all during the movie, which is a huge issue. Also, tonally, this movie is all over the place. Um, after they shot the movie, they added in so much pop and music that's not score that it really pulled me out of the movie. It felt like it wanted to be a Guardians of the Galaxy type movie that doesn't really have a score, but really has a lot of uh, just music in it. And it completely pulled me out of the film. Um, also, Cara Delevingne as the villain, really terrible. Her dancing in the third act, the third act is really terrible. Um, and this movie, again, as I said, it's tough to watch. There's some great actors, Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Viola Davis, Cara Delevingne, um, Jai Courtney. There's a lot of actors who have talent in this film, but... There was too much going on tonally. Joker is barely in it. And now I don't, I don't really hate on Leto like most people do. Um, I just don't think he had enough screen time to warrant the criticism that he got. Um, I heard a lot of his scenes got cut. And him and Margo was actually one of the dynamics that I actually liked during the movie. But then he kind of disappears for large chunks of the film. And um, again, Suicide Squad for me is easily the worst. After I came out of the theater really liking it, it was in my top five for DCEU, but this has dropped to number nine. Uh, let's move into my number eight, and that is Justice League. Now, obviously, guys, we're getting the Snyder cut, um, but this is a movie that has to stay on this list because it is a movie that did come out and that the DCEU is still continuing to talk about in their franchise. Um, I actually, I, I watched one of the theaters and I just never really liked this movie. Obviously, it really starts off with the, the mustached, uh, mustached lists, uh, Henry Cavill and Superman digitally edited out. Um, but again, there's so many issues that everyone's already talked about this movie with Joss Whedon, the way he handled this movie after the sad passing of Zack, uh, of Zack Snyder's family member. Um, but this movie just doesn't feel... Like it's a DCEU film a lot of the time. Um, while I think Flash and Aquaman are bright spots, and as always, Wonder Woman and Cavill are, um, this is a totally different Batman from Batman v Superman. Um, Affleck uh, gave, in my opinion, a really good performance in the first in Batman v Superman, and in here he's not grizzled anymore. He's not this tough guy. Um, his character has a complete 180 in this movie, which I didn't like. Because especially in this movie, because of what he did at the end of Batman v Superman, he feels a, a lot of responsibility for the death of Superman. But the movie does not, he feels like a totally different character. Um, I watched these films back to back nights, Batman v Superman and Justice League during quarantine. And it's a totally different Ben Affleck performance. And I think that's a lot to do with direction and the script, not Ben Affleck as a whole. Uh, we've already heard all the cyborg controversy. And I do, I am excited to see cyborg actually have something to do in the next, in the, the Snyder cut um, as well. And as I said, Steppenwolf is a 
terrible villain, um, easily the worst villain in the DCEU. Um, now, why do you say I had this over Suicide Squad? It's because of the characters themselves. Gail Godot is here as Wonder Woman. Cavill is here as Superman. Momoa as Aquaman. Um, I even like Ezra Miller as The Flash. Um, and there's, you know, Amy Adams barely is in the movie, which again, another big thing for me was I loved Amy Adams and Cavill. And if Cavill isn't in it, that doesn't mean Amy Adams can't be in it. And that was a big misfire as well. Also guys, the third act has a lot of color correction and it looks terrible. It looks like a bad video game with the red coloring in the last big fight of the movie. So overall, did not like Justice League. Have never liked Justice League and just not. Let's move into my number seven, guys. We're going to go as fast as I can. Batman v Superman. So this movie was always, I hated this movie when it came out. Like, passionately hated it. I'm a very diehard Dark Knight trilogy fan. And I also really like Keaton's 1989 Batman. Um, and, and when I first watched it, I was like, this is not my Batman. I'm also not a big Ben Affleck fan. So I was completely against this movie. And the way... Batman looks, especially especially in this shot, and the way he kills people in the movie. I was like, this is not my Batman. But then I we watched it during quarantine. We watched all these movies to prepare for this type of list for Wonder Woman coming out. And I had a lot more positive things to say. I actually love Affleck in this role. And I think that Batman, this is the best he's been. As I said, in Justice League, they handled him very poorly. And I'm hoping in Snyder Cut that we actually get to see this type of Batman back. Now, do I like that he kills people? Absolutely not. I'm still against that. Am I against this look? Of course I am. But it's a very different Batman that we've gotten so far in film. The idea that he's a basically Ben Affleck's age, a grizzled person who's been Batman for well over 20 years. We kind of got hints of that in Dark Knight Rises with Bale being banged up from his years, but he wasn't, but Ben Affleck is this grizzled business person now, but happens to be Batman, which I actually really, really enjoyed the warehouse scene is absolutely excellent. And I also think Superman is really good in the movie. Of course, Henry Cavill is great in here. We get Gal Gadot for the very first time as Wonder Woman as well. We have Amy Adams back. We have Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Um, a lot of the turning cast by Man of Steel is also back in this film. I really enjoy their dynamic um, and the idea of how their mother, the Martha thing. Now, I, it's, a, it's a very cheesy scene that I laugh at every time but it does make sense why Batman would save uh, Clark's mother as well. But again, another issue with the films, these films are the villains. And Jesse Eisenberg, who I'm a big, big fan of. I love Jesse Eisenberg. He's one of my favorite actors today. Um, but this, he was completely miscast as Lex Luthor. Um, and you don't take him seriously being a threat to either Batman or Superman. So um, if you can't take your villain seriously, the beating your heroes, then you can't take the movie as seriously. And again, there was a, a, an, a basically a Snyder cut of this movie, a director's edition of the movie, and it does elevate it slightly, but it does not make this a great movie. I think it's a very average movie, great performances, and there's some good scenes, but it does feel like a rushed movie trying to set up Justice League at the same time trying to be an epic Batman versus Superman movie. So it's what Civil War did so well that this movie did not do as well. Um, let's move into my number six. This might be some controversy. A lot of people love this movie, and I enjoy the movie, and that is Aquaman. Um, I've seen the movie now three times, um, once in the theater, twice here at home, and I really do enjoy this movie. I don't have, there's, you could really nitpick the hell out of this movie, um, and I, I do think that Jason Momoa is really great in the movie. Um, as Aquaman. He has some great one-timer, uh, one-liners, I mean, um, and he's built, he's really built to be Aquaman. His look, he really embodies the character very well from the comics, and it's going to be tough to seeing anyone else try to play this role. Um, gets me very excited for Aquaman 2, excited to see him in Snyder Cut, because he was handled okay in Justice League. He was a bright spot, but he really wasn't in the movie that much and didn't have a huge character arc. Here, he does have the character arc, with his parents played by Tamora Morrison and Nicole Kidman done very well. Um, and actually the, the villain work is also great in this movie. Um, Patrick Wilson as his brother King Orm is great. Um, and Black Manta, who we got hints of in this movie, also great, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, um, who I assume after that post credit scene in this movie will be the big bad of the next film. Those two characters have great, are really great to watch on screen 
and the score for this movie is also fantastic. Um, I, it's one of the scores I do listen to quite often, and I think it's a really great score. Amber Heard, I don't want to get into the Amber Heard controversy. I'm not a big fan of Mira anyway, um, and I don't really love this romance between Aquaman and Mira during the movie. I'm not a huge fan of that. Willem Dafoe also pops in the movie very well, but it feels like you've seen this type of superhero template a lot of times. Um, the idea of this person not being on the throne, a sibling or someone in the family on the throne that they have to battle to get on the throne. It feels like you've seen that type of movie, not just in the superhero genre, but in the movie genre so many times. It felt too close to home for me when I watched the film for the, as I continue to watch the movie. While I like Orm, you don't really feel like Orm can defeat Aquaman. They give you a little bit of that, that Orm defeats him in the middle of the movie, but not enough. I mean, Black Manta is criminally not in this movie at all. Um, his arc was actually the best arc of the whole film that Aquaman decided not to save his dad. That actually cost his dad's life. But for some reason, they kind of left him after that scene in the middle of the movie, which is fantastic. He's gone for the rest of the movie. And that was a big mistake for me because that arc was way more fascinating than him going against Orm. Uh, let's get into our top five, guys. Top five DCEU films. And let's start out with Birds of Prey. Uh, so many different titles, but I'll go with the one I went to the theater knowing. The Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Um, now, this movie's had a lot of controversy since it came out in February. I did see this in the theater. Um, I do love Margot Robbie in the movie. I do love Ewan McGregor, who I think steals the entire movie as Black Mask. And also Journey Smollett as Black Canary. All are the easily the three bright spots of the film. Also, it's so it's, the film is very funny and very well choreographed action scenes um, that I really really enjoyed. Um, Robbie is so great as as Harley Quinn. Just like I said about Momoa, who else can play Harley Quinn but Margot Robbie? Um, and she does have a character arc. She's breaking up with Joker, and I think that arc does continue out the entire film. As I said, Black Mask is perfectly used in the movie until the, really the very end. The way they handle his death in the third act, I'm not a huge fan of because I want to see his character come back. And that character brought a lot of tension and a lot of realism to the film that was super over the top. Now, while Ewan McGregor was having a blast as his character, which I could feel in the movie, I love when I feel the, the actors having a blast with their characters, he wasn't really handled that great in the third act. If you haven't seen a comic book, you don't really know why he just wears a black mask. So, and also, I don't think they give the Birds of Prey any backstory. They give you scenes or a scene or two with um, Rosie Perez's character, a scene or two with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and then there's just all the Birds of Prey. Um, which I think was very misused. And this should have just been a Harley Quinn film that was potentially setting up a Birds of Prey movie. This movie is a Birds of Prey movie technically. And I don't think it's a, it's a more of a Harley Quinn movie than a Birds of Prey movie. I gave the movie a 3.5 out of 5. It's in my top 20 of the year so far in 2020. I do like this movie a lot more than a lot of people, but I, I see so many issues with the movie as well. Um, now let's move into my number four movie. And that is the movie that I checked out yesterday. And that is Wonder Woman 1984, which just dropped on HBO Max. Again, non-spoiler as well here. I already had this review on my YouTube channel um, yesterday. I really had a lot of fun with this movie. There's nothing wrong with Gail Godot, Christian Wiig, Pedro Pascal, Chris Pine in this movie. They're the big four for a reason. Um, and this movie is two and a half hours. It was one of my main issues with the film. It could have been two hours easily. They could have cut so much out of the movie. And, and I felt like they, they, Christian Wiig was actually really good in the movie, which I was very skeptical of coming in. Christian Wiig actually fit into a superhero film. And she did that very well. Um, but her character felt very tacked on to the big bad of the movie, which was Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lord character. Um, it felt like the movie was like, we need this big battle with Wonder Woman at the end of the movie, and, we, and Maxwell Lord can't give that to us. We need Cheetah in the movie. And I felt like Kristen Wiig should have been in Wonder Woman, the next one. She, she'd be the only villain. And this movie does feel like it has one too many villains. Maxwell Lord was already a great villain, and it, Pedro it, it steals the entire movie as Maxwell Lord. But Christian Wiig's character feels very tacked on, especially uh, this scene that happens and she just pops in. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot she's in the movie. Um, 
forgot that she still has stakes in the film. And that was a big issue with me. And the story for me isn't as interesting as the first one. And as I said in my review, and I'll talk about it as, as a positive in my Wonder Woman review, um, this movie felt like the activities of this movie just took happened to take place in the 80s. The 80s didn't, themselves didn't feel like a character. When it took place in World War I in the first Wonder Woman film, it felt like the character in the movie. And that was the big thing that I really did not like about this film, but I had a great time with it. It's in my top 20, as I said, of the year. It's literally one spot ahead of not just Birds of Prey on this list, but one spot above Birds of Prey on my overall ranking of the year. So. I don't love this movie. I think it's a very good movie that's very necessary during this time. Um, top three here, and I can't believe I'm going to say this film is in my top three, and that is Shazam, that I saw two times in theaters, um, and I really love this movie, actually. I think this is a great movie. Zachary Levi is great in the lead role um, as well, and him as an Asher Angel play a great Billy Batson together. Um, Jack Dylan Glazer as Freddy is also great comedic timing and Levi and Grazer have great comedic chemistry together. As we move on as well, Mark Strong plays a very underrated villain in my opinion, Dr. Savannah, who's a character that I can't wait to see reappear in possibly Shazam 2, Black Adam, whenever they wanna bring his character back. Mark Strong, a very underrated actor, happy to see him in this role. And you actually do feel for his character being left out of being Shazam, he was brought in, he made one mistake, and he was never let to see this world again. And you do feel bad for his character, even though he does very evil things. And people do not talk about Savannah enough in this, so I think, I think he's really great. But it comes down to Levi and Grazer having great chemistry, fun action set pieces. I'm from Philly, so it was great to see this movie take place all in Philadelphia. People are even debating if this movie is a Christmas movie because it takes place around Christmas time. Um, it's a great and one of the best parts of the movie is actually the the family itself they're all adopted but they do feel like one cohesive family and the idea of what your family means to you was a great message and that I could really feel that and the passion of that in this film really happy to hear that David F Sandberg is coming back to direct the next Sajam film as well um I really do love this movie I did see it twice in theaters and the first time I watched it, I saw it two weeks early, uh, an early screening, and both my friends thought it was fine. Then I went with a couple more friends on opening day, and they didn't really like it. And I don't know why, but I do love this movie. I rewatch it quite often. All right, top two guys will it be Wonder Woman, or will this be Man of Steel? And it will be Wonder Woman for me. Now, a lot of you think this is the one of the best superhero films of all time. I can't go there. Um, I understand that especially women out there who absolutely love this movie because we don't really get that many female superheroes as the lead. And I am all for that. Um, I'm really happy. I was, that's what, one of my reasons why I love 90, 1984 as well, because it's great just a fresh breath of fresh air seeing a great, a really solid female led superhero film. I wasn't, I, I think Captain Marvel is just fine. And I'm very excited for Black Widow. So now this film broke so much ground for the superhero business as well. Patty Jenkins directing the movie as a fe uh, female director. Gail Godot, who I knew from Fast and Furious at the time and uh, Meeting with the Joneses, whatever that movie is called. And then this, um, she is so great as Wonder Woman and she easily is the bright spot of every DCEU film that she is in, um, especially 1984 and this one. Really great performance. Chris Pine, who I absolutely think is one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. He's also great in the movie. I actually love the first two acts of this movie. And if it was just those acts, it would probably be number one for me. But the third act does bring this movie down for me. The big fight with Aries at the end, I really sometimes skip when I rewatch. If it's on TV, I kind of change the channel whenever that scene happens because it's not a scene that I potentially like um, at all. Um, Steve's death hits me hard, but then we go right back into Wonder Woman versus Aries and the CGI isn't that great. And I know there are two gods fighting each other, but it could have been handled a lot better. The twist, you can see coming a mile away. Um, but as I said, Godot is great. The whole group, and as I said, my main complaint in 1984 is the strength of this movie. The fact that the character itself is that this takes place in World War I. And there's so many scenes that make you think of that time 
in 1984, it doesn't feel like that. So I really do love this movie as well. And my number one is Man of Steel, which in my opinion is the most complete movie in the entire DCEU. I mean, I think it's a really good movie. Henry Cavill brings this character to life in this film as Superman. How can you top Christopher Reeve? You have Henry Cavill. Also, Michael Shannon being Zod is also a great casting choice. Amy Adams is Lois Lane. All these, uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in the movie. And this movie does have a lot of issues in my opinion as well, but I do think it's the most complete DCEU film. Is this one of my favorite superhero movies of all time? No. And the DCEU has not brought me that before, but this is a great Superman film. That is my second favorite Superman film behind the original 1978 Superman film. Um, I love Man of Steel. I've been waiting for a Man of Steel sequel for a while. I do like seeing Cavill in Justice League and Batman v Superman, but he needs his own movie again. It, it was, it's so far, in my opinion, been the best DCU film. And this might be controversy, but I do think this is better than Wonder Woman. It's more of a complete movie with a really strong villain and his backstory and his life on Earth. It actually really works. His romance with Lois Lane works. There's so many great scenes. Zack Snyder, who I do, his, his two other movies are in the bottom tier for me in DCU, but this one is easily number one for me. So that's my DCE ranking. Before I go, please leave me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe, do all of those things. Coming out later, I'll do my review of Soul. I'll see you guys soon.